Listen, are you just starting off in cybersecurity? Well, today we're going to talk about three pieces of advice that you just cannot ignore as you are starting your journey. Come on, let's have the discussion. Let's talk about it. Welcome back to Struggle Security, where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. And today we're going to go over three pieces of advice for individuals who are just starting their journey in cybersecurity. And this really came from someone who had posed the question. His name is Network Bruh. He has a YouTube channel and he said, sup Gabe. He said, dope channel. Thank you. He says, um, what are the top three things you would advise a newbie or someone new in cybersecurity? Let's talk about it. Let's just start from the top of the list. The first one that I get, and it comes from a lot of discussions that I have with subscribers, people who are at work, who are newer in their uh, journey in cybersecurity, or just people just randomly ask me and jump into LinkedIn inboxes or Facebook or Instagram. They always ask me about different subjects that they need to focus on or learn to get into cybersecurity. And let me tell you where the problem is there, right? A lot of times they give me so many different things that they've been learning so many things that they've been going over and they never really focus in on any one area. So my first piece of advice, the first one, number one is pick something and stick to it. Now, when I say pick something, what am I saying? Pick a subject matter in cybersecurity, pick a topic, a concept, a skill, focus on that one, learn it before you move on to the next one, right? Many times people come to me and they have maybe 10 or 15 different LinkedIn learning classes, 10 or 15 different Udemy classes that they have not finished. So they have not focused in on one area, right? They say that they're interested in DFIR or digital forensics and incident response, pen testing and red teaming, cloud security, database administration, GRC, right? Governance, risk and compliance, but they never really focus in on one of those areas, become proficient so that they can actually execute it within a work environment. And that's really the advice there. Pick something, focus on it, become proficient to the point where you can, you can display it within a work environment and then move on to the next thing. So that was very short, very to the point, but pick something and focus on it. Don't pick everything because you will never gain a letter of a level of expertise or a capability to execute on that skill. If you never focus on one thing at a time. So that's the first piece of advice there. The second piece of advice is look at how others have done it and copy, right? A lot of times we try to reinvent the wheel. We try to be something different. We try to go a different path where that is true. Everybody has a different path that they take on in their careers. But a lot of times it can be a bit easier if you look at how others have done it, emulate some of the things that they've done and implement it within their career paths, and then really enhance it with your uniqueness, enhance it with who you are. And you know, I think a very good platform to do that is on LinkedIn. Because not only LinkedIn is good for networking with other professionals, it's not only good for responding to or talking to recruiters, it's not only good for applying to different roles, but it's also a place full of resumes and full of career paths. I mean, don't be shy to click on somebody's LinkedIn page and understand how they went from point A, point B to point C to get to the point where they're in a role where they desire to be. Say, for instance, you want to be a red team right? You look up someone who is a red team lead. One thing that you can do there is that you can look at how they went from the bottom to the top, went from maybe they just starting off at help desk to them going into a network operation center role, to them going into a security architect or engineer role, to eventually they go and pivot into something like red teaming. So, you know, I think that that's one place that you definitely should go in order to understand your progression, your career path, and emulate some of those steps that they've taken in order to get to that point. So you don't have to always reinvent the wheel. Look at what other people are doing and what other people have done in order to get to where you desire to go. Another good resource for this is a podcast that I want to recommend. It's called Getting Into Infosec. It's by Eamon Elshua. He's a good friend and colleague of mine. Um, and I've also done an interview on his podcast where one thing that he does is that he goes over people's journeys into cybersecurity. I mean, he has some very interesting interviews. I know for mine, it was going from electrical engineering into industrial cybersecurity um, subject matter expert. But you know, there's even individuals who have went from ha hairstylists to pen testers. I've seen one where someone went from a librarian, right? Literally 
a librarian into a cybersecurity professional. So all of his links will be down there in the chat. He has books about getting into InfoSec. He has his podcast. And I want you all to go to that resource in order to understand better of how people have done it so that you can emulate some of those processes. And the third one, the third one and the last one is to develop skills that are in demand in cybersecurity. You don't only want to just become proficient at what you want to do, but you also want to get marketable skills. You know, and one of the most marketable skills right now, as we have seen in the news cycles, that companies are getting hacked every single day. They're getting hacked all of the time. So organizations need people to be able to defend their networks, their systems, their assets, and their environment. So some in-demand skills would be blue team or defensive type of roles. So I want to recommend two different um, certifications or training platforms that can help you get to that point. The first one is the Blue Team Level 1 certification. Blue Team Level 1 certification. I want to give you more information about what that is. And I'll have the link for that certification down here in the chat because it's not only a certification, but it's also a training course. And a little bit of for the course overview is that the, it says on the website is that who is the course for? The blue team level one is designed to train technical defenders that are capable of defending networks and responding to cyber incidents. Isn't that what many organizations are suffering from today? Isn't that one of their pain points? You know, it says below are some examples of the skills and experience you will gain. It says analyzing and responding to phishing attacks, right? These are emails, malicious emails that come into organizations, try to take over their internal systems, performing forensic investigations to collect and analyze digital evidence. You're trying to understand how the bad guys get in and be able to understand what are some of those weak points or those threat vectors that organizations have open to the World Wide Web or to adversaries that bad guys have taken advantage of. Using a SIM platform to investigate malicious activities, log and network traffic analysis, conducting threat actor research. These are all important to organizations and these are in demand skills. Another one that I want to reference you to is that of Try Hack Me. Try Hack Me also has a very nice pathway, right? They have learning pathways. The one that I'm on right now is actually the red team pathway, which is really cool. They give you rooms where you can hack into stuff. But the one that I want to reference for this video is that of the blue team for the SOC level one path pathway. Some of the classes that they have or some of the pathways that they have are cyber defense frameworks, right? Discovering frameworks like NIST, right? Cyber threat intelligence, network security and traffic analysis, endpoint security monitoring. These are again, in demand skills that organizations need in order to defend them from the bad guys out there. So my third piece of advice is get in demand skills. And the recommendation that I have for people who are just jumping into cybersecurity, if you're looking for a technical pathway, is that of the try hack me and also the blue team level one and that is helping you and helping organizations defend against the bad guys let's just do a quick re review the first one that we talked about i said pick something and stick to it don't pick everything don't pick social engineering pen testing digital forensics and incident response pick one of those that you're interested in focus on that before you move on to the next one the second one that i said is that look at how other people have done it. Look at how they have done it. Glean from their experience and be able to apply some of that to your own learning, to your own career pathway. And the third one is look for in-demand skills. And really what I've seen for in-demand skills is that of helping organizations defend themselves from the bad guys. Defensive or blue team skills. And I recommended the blue team level one certification and also the try hack me sock level one career pathway. Hopefully this has been valuable to you. And hopefully these three gems will help to alleviate some of your struggles that you are having in getting into cybersecurity. And also, if you have any other ideas or thoughts or questions, feel free to put them down here in the comment section and I will look forward to responding to you. Thank you for being here. This is Struggle Security, where we are normalizing struggling in cybersecurity. Thanks.